Alleluia, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to our um, worship service here at Trinity Lutheran Church and School in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We are continuing the Easter celebration. This is the first Sunday after Easter, and we're going to be continuing to take a look at the impact of Easter in our lives, that the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead affects everything. And today we want to zero in on um, holy baptism, that gift where God claims you as his own, God's work in your life where you become part of his family, and your identity now is with the crucified and risen Savior. You belong to him. You will live forever. And that changes everything about you. Today we're going to think that through and talk about that as we continue to celebrate Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Oh, that I had a thousand voices to praise my God with thousand tongues, my heart which in the Lord rejoices would then proclaim in grateful songs to all wherever I might be what great things God has done for me oh all you powers that to adore O oh, soul and body join to raise with heartfelt joy our maker's praise All creatures
Alleluia. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. We gather together to worship today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. A second reading comes from Galatians chapter 5. But I say, walk in the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in his death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to it. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died to sin, he died once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for righteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. 
And our gospel lesson for today is from St. Mark, the seventh chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. And Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of our God. We continue by confessing together our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the third day is the cornerstone of the Christian faith and the foundation of the Holy Christian Church. Everything in, in our faith is based on that resurrection. Scriptures teach us that the resurrection proves that Jesus is God and that his words are trustworthy and true. It confirms to us that, that God the Father has accepted his son's sacrifice for us and that we can be absolutely sure that our sins are forgiven. The resurrection also guarantees that you will rise from the dead on the last day, just like Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. We just got done confessing this when we said we believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. The resurrection installs Jesus as our great high priest who serves us in heaven by praying for us and by bringing the holy things of God full of grace and mercy to us. The resurrection gives us absolute confidence in the faith. It separates Christianity from all the other world religions out there so that we know that we worship and believe in the one true and only God. The resurrection of Jesus Christ <clears throat> is the cornerstone of the Christian faith. It's the foundation of the Holy Christian Church. And that resurrection is also the basis of your own Christian faith and life in Christ. <clears throat> Holy baptism is what connects you to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Holy baptism is your personal connection with the risen Savior. St. Paul explained it in Romans chapter 6 to us. He made the connection for us when he said this, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we might walk in newness of life. Your baptism connected you to Jesus, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Holy baptism becomes your identity in the Christian faith. You belong to God. You identify with the crucified and risen Savior. You trust in him. Holy baptism makes that identity and that connection for you. You are a baptized believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You belong to God the Father in heaven and live in his kingdom. You are filled with the Holy Spirit who lives within you and works through you. You belong to God. Your identity is wrapped up in Christ, the Savior who was crucified and rose from the dead on the third day. Everything about you changes because of holy baptism. You have crossed over a line You've crossed over the line from the world and its ways, and you now follow and, and obey Christ and his word. You've crossed over the line already from death to life. Eternal life is a present possession that you have. Your identity, who you are, how you are to think about yourself, is bound up in the risen Savior. Your sins are forgiven. You've been given eternal life. You cherish his word. You crave his meal. You hallow his name. You seek his kingdom. You desire his will. 
and you love his people. Every single one of those things is because of your connection to the Savior, Jesus Christ, who has risen from the dead. All of this started for you in holy baptism. Holy baptism identifies you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. It marks you as one who belongs to the risen Savior. It becomes your identity. This is who you are. In holy baptism, God washed you clean with that water that's connected to the promises of God. God has placed the gift of forgiveness and eternal life in the simple water of holy baptism. And that baptismal water becomes the water of life for you. Jesus described it as being born again. You were born of water and the Spirit. You have new life. You were washed clean. You're given a new start. Holy baptism is living water for you. It gives you your Christian identity. You are a baptized believer in the risen Savior. You have a personal faith connection to the Lord Jesus Christ. The impact of holy baptism cannot be overstated in your life. It's substantial. It changes everything. In holy baptism, all the blessings and benefits of Christ's life, death, and resurrection were freely given to you. That's where it all started for you. Baptism is not just a, a, a 10 minute ceremony that happens when you're, when you're really little. Baptism is an ongoing reality in your life. That's where you became part of God's family. And now you, your identity is, a, is in God's family, in God's kingdom. Everything was given to you in baptism. Here's a sample of some of the gifts that were given to you when you were baptized. You were obviously given the gift of faith that connects you to Jesus. Your sins were washed away. That's the whole idea of the word baptism, wash. Your sins are what's being washed away. Your conscience is cleansed. You have peace with God. You are an heir of eternal life. It's a present possession that you have. You've been rescued from death. You are justified, declared not guilty by God's grace alone. You are delivered from the power of the devil. You are given eternal salvation. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit because he lives and dwells within you. You have unlimited authorized access to God the Father anytime you want. You are considered pure and holy in God's eyes. You are declared not guilty in God's courtroom. And that is what you will hear on Judgment Day as well. Not guilty because of the Lord Jesus Christ. In holy baptism, God became your Father in heaven. You were united to the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And you were filled with the powerful Holy Spirit. Every single one of those things remain with you throughout your life. Baptism is the beginning of a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ, the crucified Savior. This is all God's work in your life. This isn't dependent on you. This is not your decision. This is not something your parents do for you. This isn't something that the church does for you. This is what Christ does for you through that water of baptism. It's living 
water. Salvation water, where all the promises are given to you personally. It's 100% God's mercy and grace and goodness at work in your life. Baptism is the way that God has chosen to forgive your sins, to give you eternal life, and to bring you into his family. It's one of the holy things that God works in our lives. That's why we call it holy baptism. It belongs to God. It's his work in our life. And all the blessings and benefits of Christ's life, death, and burial are freely given to you in holy baptism. This is who you are. This is your identity. This is how you are to think about yourself. You are a baptized disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that changes everything. One of the things that scripture teaches us is that your baptism has also given you now this new life to live. St. Paul calls this new life the new man within you. For instance, here's what he says in Ephesians chapter 4. You were taught to put off your old man, which belongs to your former way of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new man created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. That new man is your new life as a baptized disciple of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. You have new spiritual and eternal life because of baptism. This new life is called the new man. It's a part of you. It's holy. It's righteous. It loves the things of God. But at the same time, you still retain your old sinful nature. And St. Paul calls that the old man. And so there's a, there's a comparison at work, but there's also a conflict at work within you. The old man of sin continually battles the new man in Christ. Although your sins are forgiven, you still must fight against your sinful nature, that old man. This is the result of holy baptism. Only baptized disciples of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, have this battle. It's distinctively a Christian battle. It's a sign of faith as well. Unbelievers could care less about this battle. They don't have a new man to battle with. They just do whatever their old sinful nature wants but not you. You are a baptized disciple of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. You are to put off this old man. This old man, this sinful nature, is the part of you that wants to sin. It's a part of you that has no problem breaking the commandments of God. It's your sinful nature. It's your sinful heart, your sinful mind, your sinful desires. It wants nothing to do with God, his word, or his will. You know what your sinful nature is. We're all aware of it, and we can see it tempting us all the time. It's the part of you that, that is rebellious. It's the part of you that's disobedient. It's a part of you that wants to get tangled up in immorality. It's worldly. It's self-centered. It's self-absorbed. It boasts of its rebellion and immorality. Jesus described this, this old man, this old sinful nature, like this. We heard this in the gospel lesson for today. Out of the heart comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All of these things come from within 
and they defile a person. That's Jesus' way of describing our sinful nature, what St. Paul would call the old man. And this old man, this sinful nature, is to be crucified and buried with the Lord Jesus Christ. One way to think about it is that it is drowned in holy baptism. It is to be continually put off as you live your daily life in Christ. And the way that you keep your old sinful nature crucified and buried and drowned and put off is through repentance, confession, and absolution. Repentance is the key to everything in the Christian faith and life. Repentance is the dagger in the heart of that old man. Repentance is when you turn away from evil. You renounce your sinful nature and you confess your sins to God. When you do that, it is the same as if it's being crucified, buried, drowned, and put off. Repentance is how all of this happens. In repentance, you turn away from your sin. You confess it to God, and you know and believe that you are forgiven because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance is the dagger in the heart of the old man. It crucifies, buries, drowns, and puts off your old sinful nature. Through the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, you live a new life. Your sins are forgiven. God has promised to never, ever remember them again. And this forgiveness of sins that you have, this new life in holy baptism, is pictured as a new man. It's created in holy baptism. It's strengthened by the word of God. It is fed by holy communion. This is who you are. This is your identity. You are a new man in Christ. You have new life. You belong to a living Savior, the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. This becomes your baptismal identity. And really, it's nothing other than the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ at work within you. The resurrection changes everything. Baptism has made a connection for you to Jesus, a faith connection to the risen Savior himself. Today, as we continue to celebrate the, the Easter victory, we realize that the resurrection impacts everything. It's the cornerstone of the Christian faith. It's the foundation of the Holy Christian Church. And it is the basis of your baptismal identity as a believer in the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray. Holy Spirit, you live and work in us as baptized disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach us to put off the old man of sin through repentance and to put on the new man created in true righteousness and holiness. Lead us to daily contrition and repentance so that we may live sanctified lives pursuing your will, learning your word, and striving to glorify your name in all that we do. We pray this in Jesus, our crucified and risen Savior's name. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. God's blessings to you. We'll see you next week in worship.